Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to my second video in my capsule paper crafting series. Um, I am here to show you my selections for the month of February. This is the list that I'm working with today. Um, you'll notice I have one little change on here, but I'm gonna walk you through everything that I pulled together. In fact, everything fits in this box, except for two things, the heat tool and the paper trimmer. <laughs> so, but everything else is all in this box, including all the paper that I am allowing myself to use for the month. Now I did want to have, um, I did want to like tell you guys a little bit more about where my thoughts are after selecting all of these things. Um, what I'm thinking since I've already pulled everything, I'm almost thinking that this is a great way if you have a lot of different items in your craft room and you just don't get to them very often and you want to make sure that you're using all of the supplies that you have, something like this might be really beneficial because maybe once a month or even every two weeks, you can swap out the, you know, which watercolor set you're using or which inks you're using, or you could swap out the stamps, things like that. So it's almost like a systematic way to make sure that you use all of the supplies at your disposal. That's how I'm going to look at it. I mean, granted, I haven't gotten into the actual challenge part of only using these items, but I can sort of anticipate that that is how I'm going to feel at the end of February um, when I kind of reevaluate and, um, kind of look back on how this challenge went and what it really taught me about appreciating my supplies, using them as much as I can and getting the most out of them. I think that's what's really going to come about by the end of this challenge. Okay, so let's go through the list. Um, I think I'll put it on screen for you so you can see what I'm doing. Let's start with the cardstocks and papers. I have chosen, starting with the white paper, I'm using Nina Classic Crest 110 pound solar white. I have a 25 pack here. For my black cardstock, I'm using Hero Arts Hero Hues um, in a pitch black. For watercolor paper, I'm using um, Fabriano Artistico Extra White cold pressed watercolor paper. Like everything else on this list, you could use whatever you want. I'm using this one because I think for all the different projects I'm doing, I think this will be the best fit for me, but you could definitely use whatever you have on hand. And then I just pulled a few sheets of Simus Stamp masking paper. Since I have um, kind of a larger selection of it, I just pulled a little bit. Those are my papers. This is gonna go pretty quick because <laughs> there isn't a lot on this list. <laughs> okay, as far as inks go, the next one up, in fact, I can zoom in now, now that we're past all the papers. So I'll zoom into my usual. I don't have to have it zoomed out so much. All right, I'm gonna be using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is the black waterproof ink. I, I've then selected some dye ink mini cubes. These are all from Gina K. I decided to do two little tins, so I've got 24 colors. This is gonna give me a wide variety. Now, you don't have to have this many. I didn't specify a number on the list because if you have some dye inks in your stash, go ahead and just use the whole collection of your dye inks, but limit it to one brand or maybe just one type of ink, like maybe if you wanna do pigment inks instead of dye, only use those pigment inks. What you're trying to do is just narrow the selection, narrow the possibilities you have to choose from. Um, less choices means less time spent making choices. So there we go. So I've got just selection of Gina K Designs Premium Dye Ink Cubes. And um, I, I, I get, let me know in the comments if you're curious which colors I actually picked. I just went through and made sure to pick, you know, like a few different reds. I only have one orange. I don't use orange a ton. Um, one orange, some yellows, some greens. I've qu uh, quite a few pinks and purples because it is February. So I'm anticipating doing some Valentine's day cards. So, um, think about your month ahead, what holidays you're going to be hitting. Um, maybe if you're heading into Halloween, like if you're doing this like September, October, you might have more orange selections or you might want some blacks and grays, things like that. So think ahead. Um, with what you're gonna be doing for the month. This is also pretty, a good exercise in planning. All right, one more ink in the selection and that is Versamark. It's from my, it's my embossing ink selection. So those are all the inks. Next up, we're talking about coloring mediums. Now this was really hard. Um, I had to narrow it down to only 24, 
Actually, I think I may have done 25. I can't remember. Only 24 colored pencils. So I went through my entire stash of um, Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils. I think I actually have like the 60 pack. And I narrowed it down to only these colors. I'm going to put them in a rainbow order so you can kind of see how much of each color I've got here. Okay, here is my selection. I've got some pinks, purples. I've got going all the way across. Um, probably the biggest section are probably the greens, just because I know with like flowers, you like different tones for the leaves, things like that. I think this is going to be a really good challenge using only these colors. And I think I have 25. Yeah, I've got 25. So colored pencils, I have 24 or less, but white, I don't know. I'm going to keep it at this. I think 25 is a good number. I'm breaking my own rules, but I made the rules, so here we go. All right, for a watercolor set, a very basic set, I'm using the Paper Fashion Basic Set. Can you believe this? These are the only watercolors I'm going to be using for the month. I think this is a really good selection, and I might even do some kind of exercises of like color mixing charts to see what colors I can get out of all these colors. I think that'll be really beneficial, and it will help me get to know this watercolor set even more. I think, for me personally, why I don't use some watercolor sets is because I don't know them enough. I haven't spent enough time with those watercolor paints to really know their potential. So maybe by focusing on just one medium for an entire month for all of my crafting, it will push me to learn about that watercolor set and really get to know it a lot more. So I think this is going to be beneficial in that aspect as well. And then an optional is white gouache. You guys know I'm not going to pass that up. So I've just got some um, Holbein, Holbein maybe, gouache. I'm not trying to say that. All right, next we're into adhesives. For my tape runner, I'm using my Tombow Extreme Adhesive. For liquid glue, I'm using Gina K Designs Connect Glue. And then I've got my usual foam tape roll. So those are my adhesives. All right, now we're going to get into the tools. So... I've got my trusty Misty. Maybe I'll zoom out so we can see all of this. <laughs> okay, my paper trimmer is the one that I use all the time, which is the Tim Holtz Tonic Trimmer. I'm gonna put that back underneath my desk here. That's what doesn't fit <laughs> in, the, in my box. Um, T-square ruler, it's this one from See Through. I've got my scoring board right here as well as my bone folder, which is in my little cup holder here. I've got four blender brushes, and these are all from Honey Bee. And they come in a set of two with a small, or uh, like a big and a medium. So I just have, you know, two of each size. I have blue painter's tape, as well as a hardboard to, to tape down my watercolor paper. As far as paint brushes go, I've got four brushes, and this is where I made a slight change from the list. I'm using a size two, size four, size eight round, and then you could do a size 10 round as well, but I'm doing a three quarter inch flat brush instead. I think just for a little bit of variety. Um, feel free to swap out some things on the list. It doesn't have to be exactly what I recommend. Use what is going to work best for you. Got my favorite white gel pen, which is a number 10 Jelly Roll. It's a nice bold white. Um, I also have a black pen. It's waterproof. The one I'm using is an envelope addressing pen from Pilot. You could also use like a Copic Multiliner or something like that. Um, white embossing powder. Should be no surprise. I'm using Brutus Monroe Alabaster. Already in my little container here. Uh, I've got some paper towels. My favorite paper towels are from Viva. They are their soft cloth-like paper towels. I like them because they don't have any texture on them, so they don't leave anything behind if I'm dabbing up watercolor or anything like that. These are really, really nice, and they take a lot of moisture. Okay, I've got a stamp chamois, brand new one, because the one I was using was, oh, it was the same one I'd had since these came out. So it was coated in ink. I mean, I could have kept using it. I'm sure I could have, but I had this one hanging around. So I'm going to start a new one for this month. And then the last on the tools is a pencil sharpener. So I'm using this one from Prismacolor. Nice and small, compact. I think I missed scissors in here. Yeah, I did. Scissors. I've got my little um, honeybee scissors or from EK Success. All right. So those are all the tools 
Now let's get into the stamps and stencils collection. Um, this one's interesting. Ready to show you guys. All right, looking at this list here, I've got six stamps or stamp sets and three stencils. So the first one is a stamp set with smaller greetings. I've selected the Mama Elephant Occasional Labels. Let me zoom, zoom in for you. You can see there really is a bunch of different greetings here. It's going to cover a lot. So Mama Elephant Occasional Labels. For the stamp set with larger greetings, I'm using Simon Says Stamp Greetings Mix 1. And this is kind of great because it's got some like larger ones, but also some smaller ones too, different styles, different kind of groupings of fonts. I think this is going to be really versatile. All right, that's Simon Says Stamp Greeting Mix 1. For a background stamp that's generic for many occasions, I'm going to use Ink Blot String It Out. I think this could be really fun with watercolor over the top, maybe even shapes cut out, which I'll be fussy cutting because there are no dyes on my list. Um, I think this could be really, really interesting. So ink blot, string it out. For a stamp set with outline images for coloring with you know animals, etc., I'm using reverse confetti huggable. Like I said, this is happening in February. I'm gonna be doing some Valentine's Day cards. I think this is really adorable because you've got for my friend sending warm hugs to you. I just love you. It's not Valentine's specific, but it does work for Valentine's Day cards. For a stamp set with floral images, I'm going to be using the Gina K and Hero Arts Friendship Blooms. I did an envelope with this when it first came out and I love it. I love all the greetings. I think there's a lot more things that I could do with this, even just using segments of it. So I think this is gonna be really, really versatile. And then the last stamp set is a stamp with solid shapes for stamping. And I'm gonna be using Botanicals 3 from Paper Smooches. I think this is gonna be really fun. I love the larger leaves, smaller flowers. I think it's gonna be really great. For stencil selection, a generic repeating pattern, I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamp Reverse Hearts for the same reason I have that Reverse Confetti stamp set, which is Valentine's Day. I think these little hearts could be used for a bunch of different things, colored pencils, watercolors, blending, lots of fun with this one. For the two image stencils, I've got uh, one from Simon Says Stamp, which is Peony Bouquet, came out not long ago. I'm still obsessed with it. I hope you guys can see that pattern. Let me take it out of the packaging. Here we go. I grabbed my cardstock. Now you can see the design. This is Peony Bouquet from Simon Says Stamp. And then the last selection is the stained glass stencil from Honeybee. So I think this could be really interesting. There's, I've got quite a variety of different items to use for the month. Um, some different looks, but that can also work together. I think it's gonna be really great and it's gonna stretch my creative muscles for, you know, I might not like these selections after a bit and be really, you know, kicking myself over what I've chosen, but I think for the most part, it's going to be very successful. I'm already anticipating it to be successful. Um, putting positive vibes out there into the world. So that is it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I've selected for my capsule paper crafting challenge in February, 2020. If this is something that works well, I might consider like doing it every single month, maybe just swapping out a few things or different tools. Um, maybe even incorporating new products that's coming in, like maybe only use one of the new stamp sets and have, I, you know, use it throughout the month. Um, I, I think I just was really craving a little bit more structure in how I approach all of my paper crafting and card making. And this might be the ticket. And from all of your responses to my last video, which thank you, by the way, so heartwarming. I'm so glad all of you connected and could kind of relate to my dilemma. Um, after that video, I know a lot of you are excited about this, if only because you're curious of how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching today. I will see you guys very soon with the very first video for my capsule uh, paper crafting challenge. I'm going to be labeling all the videos as like capsule card one, capsule card two, so you know exactly what I'm using in that video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in another video very, very soon. On screen, I've got three more videos for you to check out. These are going to be some fun Valentine's Day cards that I've done in the past. Go ahead and click through those, have a little look, look, see, see what I've created. And I hope you guys enjoy a little walk down memory lane. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you soon.